If you want to skip to the how-to portion of the video, feel free to hit that timestamp I've included down below. Otherwise, I'd first like to provide a little bit of context. This past year, one of my biggest struggles was determining what I was truly interested in. What became extremely obvious to me was how much our society emphasizes linearity and specialization. It permeates everywhere, when you're applying for jobs and they're asking for experience you could have only accumulated had you done that one thing for years. When you read about successful people online and their biographies are written such that it seems like everything that they've done in their lives led up to that one point. When you see how people who are achieving high proficiency in things are getting younger and younger. It can be daunting. The idea of time as a valuable commodity is perpetuated as urgent. It's important you start early. It's important you figure things out now. And for me, like most people, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. Sometimes it feels like I'm interested in so many potentially different things that it's paralyzing. But I've been reading a lot and two ideas have stood out to me. I want to recommend a couple of books that inspired me since they explain things much better than I could, but I first want to share my own takeaways. The first point is that it's okay to meander and discover many interests, and the second is that when you discover these interests, you should pursue them deliberately. It became really clear to me recently that it was okay to feel uncertain. I think one of the concepts that perpetuates the fear of uncertainty or of dabbling is something called the sunken cost fallacy. Basically, it's this belief that after putting time or resources into something, it's unreasonable not to continue doing that something because otherwise it'd be considered wasted effort somehow. And even though I understand that, I think that belief is wrong. Here's a radical thought. Inefficiency is okay. I was so caught up in this bubble that everything I did had to have this ulterior purpose to net me some benefit of some kind. So it used to be things like getting into grad school programs, gaining recognition, etc. But there is evidence in the research that shows that following your interests, even if they are prone to change, can be much more beneficial to success if you define success as self-fulfillment or impact or whatever. And David Epstein, the author of one of the books that I'll recommend later in the video, calls this notion range. So my goal for 2020 is to discover my range and then develop it. This may sound dramatic, but one of the things I hate is staying stagnant. And I realized that if I wanted to overcome the struggle of determining what interests me, I had to put these ideas that I was reading about into practice and just start doing. Okay, so how do I go about this? The first thing to do is to consciously decide that you want to spend time pursuing interests. This means making the mental leap to be okay with spending time on something that may not bear fruit in the end. That's the hardest thing to do in my opinion, but making that mental switch is key. The second is asking yourself some questions. What do I like to think about? What do I care about? How do I enjoy spending time? And a while back, I actually made a tool just for myself to begin to explore the answers to these questions. I call it the intrinsic interest measurement scale. Basically, for any one activity that you feel even remotely interested in, you try to assess the degree of intrinsic motivation you feel, or how motivated you are in the absence of external rewards like fame or money. There are nine criteria that you score your activity on, and then there's a table with recommended actions. Like the lowest is really consider whether you actually enjoy or find meaning within this activity and are willing to continue it. And then the highest is, looks like you're extremely intrinsically motivated. I encourage you to definitely keep this activity. So I'm gonna fill this scale out to demonstrate uh, how you use it. And I'm gonna do it for making YouTube videos. So I ended up getting a 40 for making YouTube videos, which puts me in the highest category of intrinsic motivation. And the third thing, which I guess I've already started, is just doing, experimenting, being inefficient. I know I'm not gonna make viral videos every single time. Not all of my videos will be up to the quality I believe I can get, but I'm doing it. I'm learning each time and I'm getting better. And this is the beginning of deliberate practice. Because this is a clear interest for me, I want to work towards developing it. And here are four steps for how to do deliberate practice. One of my goals for the new year is to make 50 high quality videos covering my journey in search of range. The number itself is not as important to me as striving to reach that goal. I aim to devote entire days on each interest I have. 
where my headspace is fully focused on just one activity. This is where you guys, the viewers, come in. Leaving comments, dropping likes, subscribing to engage with me is how I get feedback for how I can improve, and I'd love for you guys to come on this journey with me. Lastly, a lot of self-reflection. How could I have made this shot cleaner? What new effect can I use? And I'll keep on making videos to practice. Most importantly, I'm not going to fall prey to the sunken cost fallacy. Even after all the time I spend on YouTube, if something changes in my life, then I'll let that change happen because I'm still in my discovery phase. Before I let you guys go, I want to briefly recommend the two books that inspired me. The first is Range by David Epstein, and this is a really interesting book that introduces the idea of range, or having many interests or skills, and how it's beneficial in our current era of hyper-specialization. The second is Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth, which is a fascinating, well-researched book about how you can develop this quality called grit that will help you discover your interests and engage with them at a high level. So with all that said, my goal for 2020 is to continue to search for new interests, develop existing ones, and be okay with spending time even if things don't pan out. I think a lot of people out there may be feeling similar things as I am, so I'm excited to share my thoughts and feelings, and I hope something I said resonates with someone out there. I hope everyone has a wonderful new year, and if you want to come with me on this journey to find range, please subscribe, and I'll see you soon in another video. Peace. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I hope you like my holiday shirt, so drop a like for that, and 